Okay, good morning, it's Mr. McShane here. It's uh, Monday the 22nd of June. I uh, just thought I would send this uh, latest update by video uh, because I'm conscious I've been sending updates by letter and uh, it's not always that you can gauge the, the uh, level of thanks that I want to send you uh, by letter. Um, so thank you again, I know I keep saying it, but thank you, genuinely thank you for all you've been doing for uh, your children uh, as they've been home with you in this uh, period of unprecedented lockdown. Um, I want to make the point also that I've made before that uh, people say we're all in the same boat and we're very, very conscious here that we're not all in the same boat, you're not in the same boat. Uh, we are all in the same storm, but uh, you're all in different situations obviously. Uh, when I just think of staff here, we've got some staff shielding, some staff who have their children at home and are still trying to do online learning, etc. Uh, um, in this update I'm going to cover a few things. I want to talk about Year 10 face-to-face -face support. Uh, we've just started our second week of that, so I want to cover that. Uh, I want to talk about provision for other year groups until the summer. Um, I want to just give you a little mention about our staff and our teachers and what they're up to. Um, and I also want to talk about the summer holidays and uh, September and also some other non-COVID uh, developments. As I said, we are in the second week of our face-to-face -face support for year 10 and it's been really great to see them back uh, with their teachers. Uh, it has been a mammoth task though and I want to thank the site team and our operations staff for uh, ploughing through reams and reams of daily guidance which seems to change all the time. Uh, we obviously want to get it right, we need to make sure in terms of health and safety this is as safe as we possibly can make it for your children when they come in. Uh, and I want to make that point really, we are under severe restrictions and so uh, we have been measuring classrooms etc. Uh, but we have also been trying to make sure it doesn't look like a crime scene when they come in. We're trying to make it as normal as we possibly can. Uh, as you know we selected a group of students who we felt were struggling to engage with online learning. And that's not always their fault that, uh, it can be the technology etc. And uh, because they were struggling, we decided that we'd bring them in for two weeks. And so this is their second week and uh, benefits have been obvious. Uh, the rest of year 10, we will uh, invite in from uh, starting next week. And uh, we should be completing the phone calls for that over the next few days. Uh, apologies from me that I did say we'd try and get that done by Friday the 19th. We're obviously a little bit behind that. Uh, but over the next few days, you should be finding out uh, when your year 10 uh, student or year 10 child will be invited in. Um, in terms of restrictions, we basically have had to create little micro schools. Um, students have different entrances when they come in, they've got different hand washing stations, uh, different exits, etc. And the idea is obviously that they don't mix. And this micro school, the government are referring to as a sort of bubble. Uh, so it's very, very controlled, uh, but the benefits are, are obvious. Students can easily ask questions of anything they don't understand and get instant feedback rather than have to wait for an email. Uh, they can go over the work that's been set online, uh, but uh, online learning still remains the predominant mode of education for this term. So in terms of provision for other year groups, um, Online learning will remain as the predominant mode of education until the summer. Um, we've actually not been able to invite in uh, year seven to nine until now, but the government did relax these rules last week. Um, they did suggest that it potentially if we could do it and if it was viable, we could do it as some sort of meeting. Um, we've been looking at that, but we just consider it's a really huge operation for that. Uh, especially in terms of timings, in terms of keeping everybody socially distanced and apart um, and also the fact that we really should clean the area uh, before and after you come in. Um, so they said it can be done online um, and so we're looking now and considering the idea of maybe uh, some sort of clinic system. Um, we are doing form times at the moment, we started those last week, those seem to be going really really well. So if your child hasn't engaged with that, then please make sure they do do so. And also assemblies as well. Assemblies are starting and uh, they, they've also gone really, really well and gone down well with many students. Um, we need to remember really that the site is restricted by year 10 and by year 12 being on site because we have started last Thursday and Friday inviting year 12 as well. 
and so the whole site is actually much smaller because we're having to socially distance, get hand washing sites, etc. etc. Um, I feel particularly sorry for year 11 and year 13 students. Um, they've really missed out on all their sort of rites of passage, their normal rites of passage, so things like the prom and the formal uh, couldn't take place, obviously. Uh, even the fact of taking their exams, actually walking into an exam hall and feeling they've done that, it must be really, really strange for them. Um, but we are doing Leavers hoodies and we're doing yearbooks, so please, if you didn't know that, please engage with that as well if you wish to. Uh, prom and formals obviously are going to come under the gatherings rule, or the no gatherings rule, I should say. Um, but we will, and we promise students, we will look at that as soon as we possibly can. Uh, but Year 11 students and Year 13 students, if, if, uh, if as a parent you'll find they still need advice from us or any help from us with applications, then please remember that we're still here for them and uh, please do contact us in any of that regard. So I also want to talk just for a little bit about our staff and our teachers because uh, I really want to play tribute also to the work that they've been doing in this time. Uh, I've been really disappointed to hear national voices uh, accusing really the teaching profession of holding back the return of students and I would suggest to you as my parents and carers that that's completely misguided. Uh, I suppose it's sad to reflect that two weeks ago people were clapping on doorsteps for the NHS and for key workers after all, teachers are the key workers, um, and uh, that implication of blocking students' uh, return coming now is uh, completely unwarranted, I feel. Um, I don't know anyone here who doesn't want students to come back. Um, I don't know anybody who doesn't want students to return. Uh, staff and teachers are working really, really hard at home and when they're coming in on rota. Um, to set quality work online isn't, isn't easy particularly within the amount of time that we were given to get that up and running, I think we've done quite well. Um, and uh, really, you, you need to think that teachers, you know, every day really have, I'm told, it's about a thousand interactions, interactions per hour. So nods and winks and points and all the rest of it. But in class, that means really that any misunderstanding of a student can be sorted out within seconds. Uh, now what they're doing is they're having to do that by email, obviously, and uh, if you multiply that, by the number that, that would occur, then you can start to get some idea of uh, the, the level of, and the quantity of work that they're, they're being faced with. Um, I, I think they've done an amazing job, to be honest, um, and staff themselves, some of them are shielding, uh, some also have their own young children at home. Um, so I know no one's looking for sympathy, um, but uh, I think it's really disingenuous to, to hear anything that amounts to blame. Um, this is a serious situation. Um, we all care deeply about the safety uh, of all of your children, all of our students, uh, and obviously I, I care deeply about all of our staff. Um, so I want you to be in no doubt as parents and carers really that if you do hear that, uh, be in no doubt that we're trying to get the best situation here for every child in every year group, uh, no matter what their background or ability, um, it's what we took the job to do and certainly what we will continue to do. And so when we look towards the summer, um, year 11 and year 13, for you we've sent all the great information the government's requested back. Um, and so details about how they will come out uh, will be sent out and finalised soon. Uh, we are hearing a lot about summer schools obviously and I'm so sure you are as well and this catch up um, and this big investment of £1 billion towards this catch up. Um, so we're all seeking really further clarification on that. Um, the devil obviously will be in the detail there. Um, I suppose we could ask catch up, catch up with who? Um, all schools remember are nationally in the same position. Um, and so even for year 10 and year 12 taking exams next year, uh, the government are having to look at how next summer's exams are set and, and how they'll be marked. Um, it's going to be the same for all students across the country. In terms of September, while well, we don't know either yet really, um, the government have stated their ambition that all students will return in September. Um, certainly things are going to have to change. Um, if we put aside the idea of maybe a second spike coming, which obviously none of us want, uh, social distancing would be our problem at the moment 
As I said earlier, we've been walking around school with measures and tapes and everything else, trying to make sure this runs correctly. Um, but we couldn't run a school uh, of this size uh, with this level of social distancing required. Uh, even the government idea of bubbles is questionable, particularly in secondary, uh, because it doesn't really matter what bubble of whatever size, uh, and they're not going to work in secondary because of the timetable. If you take a normal timetable, students uh, move every hour and they don't always move with the same students. So they might be moving from an English uh, lesson, for example, into a geography lesson whereby they'll meet other students in that geography set who've come from elsewhere. And so straight away, that idea of a bubble, the bubble would burst, because the idea of a bubble is that those students don't mix. And just, just by moving, uh, like we normally would do, those bubbles will be bursting straight after the first hour. So again, if that were to happen in September, we would have to rewrite the timetable and probably look towards uh, students staying longer in individual subjects. They might have a whole morning of English, etc. But that's, uh, that's a huge problem that we will have to face uh, when we get further guidance. I think we'll see, uh, but we definitely need further guidance on what the expectations are going to be. And so on to some developments that are non-COVID related, I suppose. Um, we have obviously transferred to the Sapientia Trust, which has been great. We managed to do that on June the 1st. Um, they've been really great so far in terms of health and safety advice, particularly within this current situation. So we're very, very happy to join. Uh, obviously, it means we've become part of the family of uh, Wynn College and Old Buck, uh, who are within our uh, vicinity. So that's going to be great. We'll be able to move things together much more quickly and much more collectively. Um, as part of that transfer, you will notice that we've had to change the logo. So uh, we're no longer going to use the old logo on stationery, etc, etc. But the old logo is uh, OK to be used on uniform. Uh, we did agree with the 10 group, but we've obviously left now that we will uh, flush that uh, logo through the uniform with the new year sevens as they arrive every year. So parents in year 8 uh, to year 11, you can continue to uh, uh, buy the old logo uniform from Stevenson's in Norwich just as you always have, so that's fine. Uh, you'll notice also that we've uh, swapped over on the website, so the website is a work in progress but uh, that's coming quite along quite nicely and a lot more information now will go onto our website. Uh, just one concern that maybe a few of you have is that we will need to change our email addresses. Uh, obviously we have uh, stalled on that at the moment because we are very, very conscious that we're using emails quite heavily uh, between teachers and students and uh, teachers and parents and carers obviously as well. Um, but uh, so we're just making sure really that our new uh, email addresses once they come will be uh, able to be directed from the old email address. So if you send an email to the old email address, it will end up in the new email address for the teacher or the member of staff. Uh, that, further details will come out about that soon. In, in terms of the new build, if you've been driving past, you'll notice that it, it stopped for a while. And that was true. The uh, company who were uh, building it had to furlough some of their workers. And you know that construction was nationally stopped for a while anyway. Uh, but they're back on it now. And uh, I'm glad to say that the cladding is going to arrive soon. So the wooden bits out that, that are showing at the moment won't show eventually. Uh, cladding will go on and then we're aiming to move back in the last week of term. So that will be exciting because that will be the new reception at the top of the site. You won't have to come into uh, the old reception anymore. Well, in terms of contacts, please do continue to contact us. Uh, this, we are aware, is an unprecedented time. Uh, online learning will remain as the predominant mode of education. Um, and uh, then we've been talking about sort of blended learning from September. So depending on what happens in September, we will either all be back or we'll be doing a bit of both blended learning and probably, hopefully, some on-site returns. Um, it is an unprecedented time, so any concerns you have are legitimate. Any concerns about your child or about the work that we're setting are completely legitimate. So please do send those in. No need to apologise for sending those in. If you're at all concerned, then that's what we're here for. Please do continue to come to contact us through the student support team. Miss Parks, as you know, is obviously the main conduit and she uh, therefore brings other people in as and, as and when necessary. So it just remains for me to say really that uh, thank you for all you're doing. Again, um, we are trying our hardest here, as I said before, to make sure we're getting the best situation that we possibly can out of this. 
So uh, thank you for your message of support as well. They do mean a lot, so thank you for, for, for them to me and all the staff. I know staff appreciate them too. Uh, so until next time, I just want to say thanks for listening to me then. Uh, just stay alert and stay safe. Thanks very much.